as many people in this room probably do know, Raphael and David, you guys have known each other for decades. Decades. How long has this film been in gestation and what was the germ of the idea? That feels like a Jess question. I think that's a that's a Jess. Well, Jess is the one who kind of discovered Raphael on YouTube. So yeah, yeah go ahead, take it, Jess. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they all know I'm super, super shy, so this is their way of being like, talk, talk. <laughs> so, um, we force oh. her to speak all the time, so if you have questions, please address them. Oh. Way to <laughs> We're not allowed to ask you questions. The Academy doesn't allow that. Oh. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> um, so I guess uh, I've, I've, I've always been really excited about the idea of trying to do something different with the musical kind of genre, and I had this idea of like, wouldn't it be really cool if instead of when the characters are overwhelmed with emotion that they burst into verse instead of song, and what would that be like? Um, and so I sort of just did sort of like a deep dive on the internet, and I came across an amazing poet, Raphael Cassell, um, who at that time was the youngest poet on HBO Def Poet po Poetry Jam. <laughs> And he had lots of clips on YouTube, and I just became like a stalker, and I like watched every single po poem, and they were all amazing. And I just took a leap of faith, and I reached out, and um, I sent him an, an email saying, like, this is going to sound crazy, and I know you're uh, a poet, but is there any way you would think about trying to translate what you do um, in that in that and that type of writing in, in, into a film. And I was super excited when he wrote me back and said like, yeah, I'd really love to ex explore that. Um, and so we spent about a year with, with Keith um, trying to figure out like what that could, could be. And along, along that time, he, he sent me a beautiful poem that he had written called Monster, which was all about um, how you know, devastating it was that so many of his friends were were dying such tragic deaths in Oakland. I think that sort of became sort of a little bit of a germ. And then we were lucky enough to um, do an event uh, for our, our documentary called Thunder Soul, which Rafa was unable to go to. And he sent his amazing uh, best friend, David Diggs, <laughs> instead. And luckily for everybody involved. <laughs> luckily for all of us. Rafa couldn't make it. Rafa couldn't make it. <laughs> And it just blew us away, like within, you know, because he's himself, he is amazing. And, uh, you know, we quickly, the four of us were like, yeah, you know what the movie should be is just all four of us trying to figure it out. Raphael, was film in your head as a possible genre you wanted to explore at that point when Jess contacted you? Um, w want, absolutely. I, I don't think, I don't know that we. There isn't that industry doesn't exist in the, in, the, in the Bay Area that sort of that feels like such a fantastical idea that you would ever be able to make a film of a story that you were that you were dreaming about and so I think we would we would think about long form stories but we really think about them more in terms of theater or other sort of more immediate immediately available resources. Mm. Um, so to, I mean to us at that when we were the, you know we were late teens early twenties at, at that point this felt Jess and Keith were the, the biggest producers we'd ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> that you know that were that were that were within contact you know so we were so dead set on just trying to live up to what they were what they were seeing in me and then and then eventually seeing in us um i was i was we were shooting like web series stuff and music videos and i, I was doing like a lot of post production and set work but this was all sort of very small and localized mm. and so i think the brain was working in terms of story in that way, but it really took um, w what ended up being years of development with them to to both realize for ourselves, uh, to realize ourselves as, as screenwriters, and also to figure out sort of what, how to make some of those skill sets that we had developed in, in other relevant spaces apply to, to this medium. David, were you at first like, hello, I'm a future Tony and Grammy Award winner, like, He's been saying Where that for am I? years, and it's been so <laughs> annoying. Um, and now, now it's now he's got it, and he just won't shut up. <laughs> Quiet, Rafa. <laughs> when you have statues, you can talk. Now we. <laughs> no, uh, no, man. I was a fucking substitute teacher, like I. <laughs> uh, and 
it, yeah, and then I was like sleeping on subway cars in New York when when I met Keith and Jess because I, you know, made the pilgrimage with some friends down to to uh, Obama's inauguration, which is where we actually spent a day going to a Maroon Five concert. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's why we're all wearing maroon today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is deep cut, guys. No. <laughs> Just That's to let so you in on the didn't, weren't trying to blend in with the background. Didn't know it was going to happen that way. Just trying to feel like we belong. <laughs> Sorry for all your pictures. <laughs> Maroon uh, Five. That's very New Oakland. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's no part of Oakland. <laughs> Sorry, Lambert. Uh, no, yeah, no. I I wasn't uh, thinking any of those things. I was mostly concerned with like eating and and making rap songs, which is what you know. Raf and I really started working together because he was running a studio in North Oakland when I came back from college, and uh, we like stayed up one night making rap songs all night, and that was it. That was like, oh, this is what I do now. This is who I work with on everything, right? Those rap songs went so well. <laughs> we should probably, I don't know, you know. Right plays. That seemed like a logical thing at the time. Uh, but yeah, so I, <clears throat> um, when this came along, it was, again, it was mostly like the first few years of this were really uh, us trying to impress them, like, dr like driving down to LA and like pretending we had hotel rooms because we were totally adult and then like sleeping in our car. Wow. <laughs> like, but you know, like driving the whole way down being like, what is it, how do, you, how do you write, what is stage direction in a screenplay? What does that look like, you know? And Jess and Keith really just pretending that they didn't know, we were, had no idea what we were doing and being like giving us scripts to read and being like, why don't you guys read these? Just, you know, because they're things that we like. And us being like, oh, yeah, totally, we could look at these. Because among all of the other scripts we're reading and writing right now, we might as well, like, look add at these, these ones. The pile. We'll add them to the pile. Sure, you guys like these? Great. We'll send you some that we like, too. <laughs> uh, but what, you know, what they were doing really was artist development um, and being very kind about it. But, sp you know, spending 10 years with us, like, trying to teach us how to do a thing and also all four of us sort of working together to figure out how to do something that none of us really knew how to do like how to bring an art form that we were very versed in and figure out how to make it look mm. natural on a on a screen Keith when you think back to this whole process did the development of the screenplay happen more easily or more was it more difficult of a process than you imagined it would be I would say it was a longer process <laughs> than I think any of us imagined it would be, but it, <clears throat> I think it, I don't think it was ever difficult in the way that development sometimes is. Like I think we all very, very early on knew we all wanted to make the same movie as each other. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times that development feels the most difficult is when you either never realize you're all trying to make a different thing or you know you're all trying to make a different thing from each other and stuck working together. Um, this was really pleasurable the whole time just because we all knew from the very beginning what we wanted to make and it was just about carving away the stuff that wasn't that. It's super impressive that Carlos Lopez Estrada, this is his first feature film as a director. I mean, that's extremely impressive. How did you guys land on him? I think you guys had a history together with some music videos and how did you get Jess and Keith on board for bringing him on? Yeah, I mean, I. I met Carlos doing clipping music vi videos for my band Clipping um, that were way overreaching. I mean, what we knew about Carlos is he always does more with with what is available. You know that we knew that going in, and and really that was seven or eight years ago. And since then, uh, I've Clipping's worked with him a bunch more. Ralph and I have worked with him, and and all three of us have worked together on some things. The story about. I'll let you tell the story of how Carlos ended up getting signed on as the director. Yeah, it's we, a good one. We, the three of us were having a, um, I mean, Justin Keith were having a meeting in New York. We we sort of knew that there was an upcoming window where, where Diggs was going to be uh, available to do a, a longer stretch of shoot, this 22 days that we had. And so we were sort of just trying to reverse engineer from there. We knew we had to do a page one rewrite. We knew we had to get uh, going as, as soon as possible. And uh, and we started sort of talking about, well, you know, what... what um, how would we want to? How would we want to do this? Uh, and they asked if if I 
if there was anybody that I that I thought should direct. Um, and I, I immediately thought of Carlos because we we knew that what this was going to take was somebody that we had um, an easy shorthand with mm. that was going to be able to uh, uh, take in a story that's so site specific and respected enough to make this a truly collaborative experience going forward um, because it was going to require um, constant communication in real time mm. to make sure that it felt authentic, right? The, the thing we needed to, to ensure more, more than anything is that we're telling a hometown story of a place where people will then see it <laughs> and, and, and grade it based on and whether or not it feels honest and sincere to the place. Um, and so we knew that Carlos is a very, he's a very careful director. He's a very, um, very loving director. Mm. Um, and, and we're, we're big advocates for, as, as, as we learned from Jess and Keith, to, to believe in people and, and, and when they have a, when we have an opportunity to, to hand forward, like, it's very hard to get your first film. And we, we thought of Carlos as, well, this is somebody who's ready to, that we know is ready to do it and that is going to work with us in a, in, a, in a way that we feel like is most conducive towards getting, getting a, a very ambitious idea executed well. And, and the other big thing was we were working at... Um, uh, David and I started this program at the Public Theater in New York called Bars, which is a theater in verse workshop, and it has a thank you for that one person who clapped. <laughs> um, uh, it's a it's a workshop that, that's just f examining the intersection of, of theater and ver and heightened language. Mm. Um, and there's an end video project that we do every time that's that's sort of like filmed in front of a live audience, and it's this big one take thing. And Carlos really created that for us, um, and we'd done it we'd done it a few times with him. And a lot of that was an investigation on how to capture verse um, that is traditionally in the theater I into film and transfer and put it on YouTube. It did very well. Um, and so we were like, well, this is somebody also who's gone as far down the, the, the experimental rabbit hole in this medium as anyone else. Um, let's, let's, like we've been doing, let's elevate uh, one, one of our peers along with us into this opportunity. Let's band together and let's, tr let's try to see if we can solve this riddle together. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in really quick and just say that another thing that, that was so appealing about um, having someone like Carlos be a part of this team is that I thought that it's really, it was really important for all of us that if we were going to add someone to our, to our team that they bring a unique perspective mm -hmm. and I think that his pers perspective as a Mexican American like telling this kind of story about perception um, was just so important and, it, and along the way like every single member of the cast and Janina kind of sold herself a little short and uh, telling why like how she ended up being part of this process and I would love for her to say her perspective <laughs> which brought which was very very important to what the story is, is about in this case I read this character and I felt like I, I can be of service and um, the last time I felt like that was my first series ironically the L word a person is so very different from me but this person is actually very similar to me mm -hmm. and the first um, thing I wanted to do was take a meeting with Jess Keith and Carlos and make sure that they were okay with my way into Val and um, that was in the experience of the child of immigrants and um, again we don't talk about that at all but is if there's any is there anyone here who is an immigrant or the child of immigrants yes okay so you know you know that we feel this thing it is a responsibility to uphold the sacrifices that our parents have made for us to be in this country and receive and thrive within these gifts and that means that you have to put yourself first in your own growth and you can be in love with someone and see that they will hold you back and have to choose yourself over your love. And that is what I wanted to make sure they were okay with and, and we were all on the same page and then that's when I read. Um, and ironically, I was in a room of all immigrants and child, children of immigrants mm. when I had that meeting. It was emotional, we got a little. Congratulations on this movie.